Are you a middle school math teacher struggling with huge gaps in learning of your students and have students who have a huge range of capabilities and you're wondering why these kids still cannot add and subtract negative numbers when they definitely should already be able to? Well, if this is you, then this video is for you. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. I help sixth, seventh, eighth grade and Algebra One teachers teach with ease and engage their students. And in this video and then the next video, I'm gonna be sharing my best tip top strategies on how to add negative numbers. And in the next video, if you wanna check that out, we're gonna be talking about how to subtract negative numbers. I'm gonna show you my exact process so that you can take what I'm teaching you here and take it into your classroom so that this can be a huge benefit to your students. So let's dive right in. Okay, so how do I go about teaching adding integers? The biggest tip that I can give you, because it's really the most effective way that I have found to start with teaching uh, my students, is to use counting chips. Now, if you are teaching face-to-face, -face, you can go to the hardware store and purchase physical counters, or you can simply make your own like I have done here. All I did was I took green construction paper and labeled them with plus signs, and I took red construction paper and labeled them with subtraction signs. I just cut out a bunch. I actually had like a student do this and gave them a job um, so that they had something to do and I could save some time. So, but if you go to the hardware store, you can buy physical plastic counting, counting chips, which is a little bit, you know, nicer. But if you don't have the funds, which I definitely don't, I just made my own. So if you are teaching virtually, you can also do this too. But I think most of us are teaching face to face. So how do we use counting chips to teach adding, subtracting integers? This is exactly how. So if I, I'm going to show you real examples of what I do with my students. And you can see here, I'm using very simple, low numbers. I'm not, I'm not giving them numbers like 97 or like 275, right? Cause it just like, that's just making it harder for the simple fact of making it harder. Because if they can do simple numbers under 10, then they can do all the harder numbers too. So here's how it looks. I have negative four plus one. So I'm gonna put out, I'm gonna count out negative, I'm gonna count out four of my negative chips. Boom, I have negative four here. And then I have one positive chip. Doesn't matter where you put it, I'm just gonna put it right here. And you're gonna see, okay, do any of these, you know, I'm actually gonna move it to the end here. Um, do any of these combine together to zero each other out? Meaning, is there one negative for every positive. Yes, right here. So I'm gonna place the red on top of the green, boom. I zeroed that out. So what do I have left? Three negatives, right? Okay, so my answer is going to be negative three. Now in my next example, same thing. I have five plus negative two. So I have five positives. Here are my five positives. And then I have two negatives. So I'm gonna take my two negatives here. How many of these zero out? Well, these, this one zeroes out, this one zeroes out. What do I have left? Three positives. So my answer is gonna be positive three. Okay, next I have three positives. One, two, three, and one negative. So I'm gonna take out my one here. Same thing, these two zero out. What do I have left? Two positives. So positive two. Next, I have two negatives and then one negative. Nothing zeroes out here. So what do I have in total? Three negatives. So my answer is gonna be negative three. Hmm, so then we're gonna be doing a lot more of these, but for the sake of this video, you know, I'm only showing you a couple. I am showing my students a lot, a lot, a lot of examples until we start to see and until I start to get them, um, until I pose the question, I'm sorry, what are you beginning to notice? Are you beginning to notice anything at all? Okay, let's keep going to see if you're starting to notice a pattern. Okay, so here I have five negatives. 
I'm going to bust out five negatives here. And then I have two positives. Okay, so how many of these zero out? So this one and this one zero out. So I'm left with three, negative three. Okay, so the next one, I have six negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I have one positive. So these zero out and I'm left with one, two, three, four, five. Hmm, I'm starting to notice that I'm trying to notice something. It kind of seems like the bigger number here, right? Not, not just if we ignore the negative for a second, six versus one, six is bigger. The answer always seems to have the sign of the bigger number, right? Let's see if that's true in this, because six is bigger and it's a negative, my answer is negative. So let's see if this example, if that theory is true in this example. I have two positives and three negatives. Which number is bigger if I didn't have a negative there? Three, right? So these zero out and I'm left with negative one. Yeah, that seems to kind of be true. Hmm, what happens when you add integers with the same sign? Okay, let's see. I have two negatives and three negatives. My answer is gonna be negative, so negative five. And then here I have negative one and then negative five. So we're noticing hmm, that one, two, three, four, five, same signs means answer. If, if they're both negatives, our answer seems to be negative. Again, we're going to be doing a lot of examples to kind of test these theories to notice patterns, to see if what we are thinking is true. And when they start to kind of start to see the pattern, this is when I will, I will introduce kind of the algorithm, so to speak. This is my reference sheet and this is all about adding integers. And I, I teach my students a little song and it goes, um, same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract, Take the sign of the greater absolute value and your answer will be exact. Okay, so that's what it is. Same sign, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add, this, add the numbers together and keep the sign, just like we did here. So it's negative one and negative five. We're gonna add them together. One plus five is six and we're gonna keep the sign negative. If we have different signs, we're gonna subtract and we're gonna take the sign of the greater absolute value. So here's a quick example of that negative three plus negative five, these are same signs, so we're gonna add them. Three plus five is eight and keep the negative. Negative five and two, they are different. This has a negative and this has a positive two, so we're gonna subtract them, right? Five minus two is three. And the five has, is the larger number, right? Has the bigger absolute value and it's negative. So my answer is gonna be negative. I will introduce these rules much later after we've done a lot of examples of using our counting chips. But for the sake of this video, I'm introducing it much quicker, obviously. I'm gonna be doing a lot more examples than what I've shown you in this video. But I think after your students have played with the counters, they start to notice patterns, they, they're they starting to realize like, oh, there's kind of a, a pattern here. Things kind of work the same every time they really start to get it. And then I will show them the reference sheet uh, and then it kind of all will make sense. We will dive into subtraction in the next video because I don't like to introduce subtraction right away. I need my students to really, really understand adding integers. And when I show you the subtraction video, you'll see why they need to have a really good grasp of adding integers before we even talk about subtracting. So if you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments because then I can record more of these type of videos that you need help with in terms of, you know, how, how do we help our students in our classrooms and definitely check out the next video where we're going to be sharing all about how to teach subtracting in your subtracting integers inside your classroom. Until then, bye for now.